Welcome to the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast. From the bus leagues to the big leagues, the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast has got you covered. Here's Jeff and John. Hey everybody, welcome to the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast. This is episode number 106. 106. And this is the first one with Odyssey that we're doing, and we're going to have David Murphy on today. He's going to join us. He's part of the the TV broadcast uh, uh, color analyst, a fan favorite from the 2010-2011 World Series teams. Uh, been a fan favorite forever, but he's going to be joining us here in a little bit. But first, let's clean some house. Let's get into all of this. Um, we are less than we've, – we've booked it. We've booked our spring training. Yeah. By the yep. way, let me say this, guys. Spring training, we're going to be there. Jeff's going when they first get there. You're going here in a couple of weeks. Yeah. On the, <laughs> I, leave the thir- I leave the 13th uh, a little later than I normally go, <clears> but – in the past, I've had somebody paying for me, but but now that that Rangers today is its own entity, you know, yeah, I gotta I gotta watch the budget, and if I can save a night a hotel and a little a little on the rental car, then that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna fly in on the the 13th and be there bright and early on the 14th for that first workout for pitchers and catchers, and then uh, uh, I'll I'll be there 10 days, and we're gonna come home, and uh, you and I are gonna go on the the sixth through the, the 12th. Yeah, let me say this on the sixth through the twelfth. That's some. It's that's probably around some spring train or some spring break times for you guys. It's gonna be a big year for people going out there. If you were out there between the sixth and the twelfth, well, we get in late the sixth, so really the seventh, the seventh through the twelfth, because yeah. we do leave the twelfth. We're heading out that night, but anytime in between there, if you're coming out for spring training, hit us up. Let us know you're going to be there. Maybe we'll go to booties and. I'll drink a beer if we get a few of them together one night or something. We want to meet you guys. Look, we, like we've said, this is your podcast. This is your Rangers today. We are, we, we want to bring this to y'all, um, and do that. So let us know if you're going to be out there. We'll certainly try to hook up or at least see you around the fields and maybe go get a beer that evening after a game or whatever. But, uh, can't promise anything, but certainly want to see you guys. Uh, it was fun on the live show. I think that's where we figured that out. We had a bunch of fun. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we'll do, uh, We'll do at least one show when we're out there. Um, yeah, we'll probably um, do one or I'll, two. We'll do a couple when I'm out there, and we'll uh, get uh, I don't know somebody, a uh, couple guys, and, and uh, sneak away up to the uh, press box or, or something like we did with uh, Joe Barlow and Nate Lowe last year. And we also went inside the uh, Dane Acker in the media center, right? But that was like a day off for the major leaguers, right? Um, so I don't think we're going to run into that this year. So, well, anyway. We're, we're smart people. We'll figure it out. And, uh, we're, we are going to run into Tuesday night booties for the trivia. trivia. We'll have some trivia. Yeah. I never got to do that. You know that. We've never had that. Well, we're going to leave on a Tuesday. So I don't know that you're going to get to we're do leave it. it on Tuesday. I don't know. Whatever the 12th is. I think it's a Tuesday. I thought it was Wednesday. No, it's a Tuesday because the sixth is a Wednesday. Anyway, um, sorry. I'm missing it again. Yeah. That's okay. All right. So here we go. Um, we got to talk about big league stuff. We got to clean house here before we go down in the bus leagues. Still nothing on the, the free agent market. We did well. Um, not nothing. Um, uh, you know, uh, Travis Jankowski has, has returned. And, right. Oh, that, right. He wasn't announced yeah, yet yeah, when and, we did that. They had, Montgomery. Those deals are official. I think they, we had talked about them last week and, um, I'm ecstatic. You know, I'm a big Travis fan. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, he's a friend of the Travis, show. Travis is willing to come on, but. Uh, this week, but his uh, he's at home in Pennsylvania, and he's got four kids running around, and he he was concerned about uh, uh, running the camera with kids bouncing around the house. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll probably grab him in spring training. But, no, he'll uh, do it for sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, good guy. Understand? You know, he he was at Fan Fest. Talked the next day. Uh, talked the interesting that day, and he said, said "Hey, some interesting I'm, things. I I could have had I could have taken a little more money, but uh, he wants to win." He wants to win. His a his family is comfortable with the Rangers, but he wants to win. You know, and then you know, I think a guy who knows who he is, um, being a part of something special. Um, if you can't get 500 at bats, uh, I think I think uh, that's that's pretty cool. And I, I don't think that he had an opportunity to be an everyday player because he would have taken that. I think, but um, unless maybe it was with Oakland, I don't know. But um, anyway. Good, good for him. Good to have him back. Good guy to, you know, talk about um, how he helped uh, Evan Carter last year. Evan Carter had said that Travis was one of the guys who helped him, and uh, Travis was pretty funny. He's like, "I don't think he needed my help," but you know, a, a rookie <laughs> rookie could always use a veteran perspective. Um, and then, and then Robertson, uh, beat writers had a, a conference call with him Monday, and we know how nice Travis Jankowski is. Well, David Robertson seems about. 
to be the, the next nicest guy in, in around just super nice, uh, a veteran guy. He also just wants, wants to win. He's won early in his career with the Yankees in 2009. Um, he's always, always seems like he's, he's with a good club. So, uh, the Rangers are a good club and he's, he's joined in them. He doesn't need to close. He said he can do whatever, but I would imagine that he gets some save opportunities in there. But, um, the big news of the week came, uh, I don't know what day it was Tuesday, maybe it's Wednesday. Oh, uh, the Corey, Corey, Seager. Corey Seager with the, uh, with the sports hernia, um, a lot Again, of people seem so upset at that, and I uh, think you, you try to avoid surgery if you can help it, right? Yeah, the last surgery is like the the last resort. You know, you don't want to have surgery, and um, I I think uh, you know based on what they what doctors had told them during during the postseason and then after the season was let's give this thing a chance to rest. Maybe you can strengthen it and then figure out a way to manage it. And I just think that after making those attempts to do that, it didn't work out. So when do you want them to have surgery? You know, obviously you want them to have it right away, but again, surgery is, is the last resort. Um, and if there was a way to try to avoid surgery, you do that. So they couldn't avoid it. They had it done two weeks before the start of spring training. Uh, he's going to miss most of spring training. It's better. It's better to, to do it before games count. You know, it, it, you know, he, he showed last year that he does not need a ton of at bats to be a, a badass. You know, he yeah. came off, he came off the injured list, missed 30 something games. He'd had like five at bats at Frisco with that. I mean, he, he, I think he played two games and got, got like the stomach flu or something comes back, hits a home run first at bat. Look, this, this guy is going to be fine. Um, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset at him or with the club. He'll be around spring training. They, not they, they tried to do what was best for him, which was avoid surgery, and, and and he can't. So, you know, keep in mind he missed, I think, forty-one games last year, forty-three. It was in the forties. Um, he's gonna, he's, he has, he is going to be given an opportunity to play far more than that because they had the surgery when they had it. Whereas if they had waited to try it out and and then shoot April, it just wasn't responding and he had to have the surgery. Then he's missing. Have two. it now, yeah. get it out of the way now. And, um, so anyway, I mean, even, I, even I, if he misses a week of the season yeah. with that thing yeah. to get fully healthy, you would so much rather that than this thing. Like you said, April, we decide let's do that. And then you're yeah. coming back in June. Yeah. And, and then, uh, I, I saw on, on the old Twitter feed, I, I don't, sometimes I just shouldn't look at my notifications. Somebody had, <laughs> Somebody had mentioned, uh, well, why didn't Max Scherzer have surgery sooner? You know, well, Max was at Fan Fest. Uh, he was great. He he read he, to the kids. He did, you know, story time with Max. He did two sessions of it. Was totally into it. You know, you could tell he's a father. He also did a long Q and A with Eric Nadell. Um, just answered a ton of questions. And um, you know, when he when the season ended, he was checked out. Um, they took images and everything. And at the time he did not have a herniated disc. Um, and so he rested and started going about things again. And the, the back pain started, you know, the nerve pain, that was the telltale sign is the nerve pain down the leg. Um, had another image. There wasn't anything there. It didn't go away. Third image. There it was. And you can't miss a herniated disc. I speak from experience on this. It looks like, it looks like a, a funnel cloud hanging down. It, it, re it really does. You cannot miss it. It's, then it rests on the nerve and it screws everything up. Uh, so he had the surgery December 15th. The problem didn't present itself until then. So he couldn't have, you know, he couldn't have had sure. the surgery November 2nd, you know, <laughs> right after the season. So exactly. that was the delay there. Um, the, the, the disc wasn't herniated at the time the season ended. So he was, anyway, he was doing his workout. He, he did it as, as soon as, as he could. Um, I tell you what, it was, it was interesting. I told him this uh, listening to what he said. Uh, about his symptoms and and what the the first six weeks is like after herniated disc. I I had the surgery for that ten years ago, uh, ten years ago almost in the day, uh, and um, I was like, p uh, what do they call it? PTSD. I don't want to. I mean, yeah, it's that's probably a little dramatic, but there's a lot of a uh, lot of similarities. I know exactly what he was going through. It kind of felt good, you know, to know that hey, me and a me and this Hall of Fame baseball pitcher have, have experienced the same thing. Um, you know, it's, it's a mental grind because you have the surgery and the disc is very vulnerable still. And, um, you have to give it six weeks where you can't bend. 
yeah. lift or twist. And, and he has kids. I had a, I had an 18 month old at the time and, uh, it was just a grind. You know, you can't pick them up. Pick yeah. them up. You can't, you're not supposed to carry anything heavier than a gallon of milk, which is eight pounds. And, um, it, it just, but, but as soon as the, as soon as you get to the six week mark and they give you the all clear, which he's received, it's like this huge weight that's lifted off right. your shoulder. So I don't think he's going around picking up all of his kids and wrestling with them right now, but, um, he is, he is going to be picking things up here in the next couple of weeks. He'll be at spring training doing his rehab. And he thinks that uh, so, June or July so is, is, is a deal. Yeah. There. And all those guys will be there and, um, you'll see him running around. He's probably not going to play. Any on, games, on, don't you? Yeah. Honestly, you know, um, it, it's you just you have these things happen and right and you just do the best. Let me tell you what: if you're going to spring training, you, you, it's as close as you get to the big league guys, and that's great. But you've heard about these minor league guys, especially here. You can walk back to those backfields, yeah, and watch some of these guys that you know that that they are destined to be big leaguers. Uh, Sebastian Walcott's going to be back there. You're going to have. You know, a lot of these guys are in big league camp to start, but they, they end up back there. You can get back there and watch some fun baseball. Yeah. And, and you'll see uh, major leaguers. They'll go throw in a minor league game. Absolutely. Of pitching in a, in the, in the big ballpark, uh, starting pitchers do that a lot. Uh, so you may be able to, you may be out there and you might stumble upon uh, Nathan Evaldi making a start on the backfields okay. and definitely relievers trying to get their work in, you know, toward the end of camp. I would imagine that, that, if Corey Seager is able to take at bats, he, yes, he'll play in Cactus League games, but um, he might want to take get some minor league games. Yeah, then, and you know the thing is, these guys can go from uh, from field to field, you know, because there's there's going to be minor league games, you know, a double A game, a triple A game, a a ball games, and um, going on at the same time. And so I've I've seen guys who have taken at bat in the double A game, walked over, taken at bat in the triple A game, back to the double A game. So they they can go get their bats whenever you know it's you don't have to play by the you don't have to play by the rules and then exactly um, so anyway it but it's a good time back there you never know who you're going to run across uh, but I'll, back back to the original point about Seager and and, and Scherzer's injuries you know it's reality stuff, stuff happens it's reality you know? and, and when it happens you 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 do your best and and. When you got to get it fixed surgically, you go get it fixed. Absolutely, and, and, and deal with the consequences. So, anyway, um, but that's it for the news. I mean, now there's there's more. I mean, so let, let's talk about Montgomery. Um, you, you actually wrote something. Uh, they 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 kind of feel like they might can move on without it. Well, you know, you just kind of listen to what they had to say and the way they were saying it, and and this is the smart thing to do. But they were talking. You know, he's not on the team now, right? And so they're like, hey, you know, we we like our five guys, uh, and they should. And you can just tell that, you know, it, it's what, what isn't, what isn't there now you can't count on. So they're, they're, they're going with what they got, at least mentally. I'm not saying that they, that six years, is that what's holding it up? I don't know what it is. I just, you know, I mean the, the TV deal, hopefully by the time um, well, yeah, that's next week thing. rolls around, that's something that'll have resolution to it. But um, <laughs> there, there is concern that, that, 2024 is going to be okay, but then 2025, you're not sure about. So they got to get all their ducks lined up in a row. But I still think that if, if, if you're just looking at the, the, the landscape, this team is going to get a good conch, a good TV deal. Yeah. Um, Either way, because they're going to be, it's not going to be the 110 probably, but 110 million, but, it's still going to be enough where you can supplement your roster. And I think that they should, they should bet on, I think they can bet safely and take a safe risk that they're going to have money if they needed to sign Jordan Montgomery to a multi-year deal to do it. I now I, I still think though, that it at play is the philosophy of the club and they don't give out these six, seven year deals to, to starting pitchers. They just sure. don't. So uh, I think, I think that <clears throat> as, as the window to spring training narrows and as the players start to get antsy about knowing where they are, I'm sure they already are, are antsy, um, you know, find the best deal where you're going to be the most comfortable and, you know, and, and, and take it. And, and maybe that is what keeps the Rangers in, in the ball game here. Um, but again, I just, you don't really know what the market is. Do you hear, you hear Red Sox, you hear Giants, the, the Phillies still think they have a shot. I think the Cardinals are, are still hopeful. Um, you know, the Cubs you don't hear about after they signed the the left-hander from Japan, but 
I think the Cubs would still be a, a, a potential landing spot. So anyway, um, we'll see what happens, but I would think that this is going to happen in the next week. I would just think that at some point, Jordan Montgomery is going to say, all right, Mr. Boris, it's time for us to pick a team. Yeah, we need to pick a team and let's go. So if if they don't go with Boris, what starters are out oh, with there? Montgomery? Um, I know with Montgomery, yeah. If they don't, Boris, yeah. If they don't go with Montgomery, who else? I mean, because they could sign someone, uh, one of these guys like they've picked on before to come out that that's maybe uh, just to take a flyer on an innings eater that maybe, you know, they've got, look, they've got top of the rotation guys on the roster right now with Evaldi and, 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 and uh, you know, you're going to have those guys coming back in the middle of the year. I mean, you want depth. That's what you need. Yeah. You need depth. And and uh, another veteran arm that would, you know, I always, I kind of threw out there, I was toying around with some stuff and threw out like Marcus Stroman at one time. And then he ended up signing and, uh, right. and stuff like that. But, the, and he, he signed actually for less than what I had predicted, you know, what I kind of projected. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, it, it's also, it has to do also with clubhouse. Um what these guys do too, I still think that they, they they're big on how the club has. Yeah, goes. yeah. Well, and Bauer, okay. what about that? So Bauer is nah, not nah, going to nah. happen. I don't think so. I I would be surprised if it did. But you uh, see, he came out yesterday and he said, what he said was, I will take a league minimum deal with incentives, and I'll earn more than that's what he. Well, found. great. Um, you know, uh, it, 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 there's there's still there's still the character thing, yep. and then, um, well. And I think we've talked about it. While it all appears that that stuff was made up, he still had stu- issues before it, it, that. Yeah, he, he he's that stuff. There was an encounter. It sounded, you know, and and it sounds like it wasn't uh, a, a love story. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. But so uh, he's he, an adult. He, he's that- a, he's innocent, but you know the details would suggest that there wasn't a lot of innocence there. So, right. um, and and he's you know he's been in. And he's been outspoken against the commissioner and he's even started to you know, realize that that was a mistake or maybe he's realizing now it was a mistake because, because he's not career, getting in, you know, nobody's up in the, in the, in jeopardy. He but, wants to be back here. Um, yeah. Um, but I don't, I just don't see that happening. Well, um, let's be honest. Let, let's take away the whole incident with the woman. Okay. There's still questions about Trevor Bauer and some of his issues in the clubhouse and the way he is. Bit selfish, yeah. you kind of hear. Well, it. Yeah, you know, but but like Mookie Betts said, hey, I would take Trevor Bauer on my team. I would, you know, I would, if I were a team, I would sign Trevor Bauer. And okay, and so there are, and Mookie is a as good as they come. I mean, so there, there are weird. there are. Um, it's just a weird thing. It's just yeah, it's just a tough situation, and then you know, it's not going to be what, what, what somebody what somebody has told me is um, they were they they were told by a GM once upon a time. Um, if you feel like you can get up and explain to the public, get up in front of the media, uh, go, you know, at caravan stops at fan fest, thing like that. And, and explain to the media why you signed this guy who has issues. past issues. If you can, if you can do that and you feel confident about it, uh, and then you're willing to put your reputation on the line that this person who you're bringing into your team and into your community is going to be upstanding. Then, then do it. And yep. if you don't think you can do it, then you probably shouldn't. So, um, but so beyond Trevor Bauer and Julio Urias, who, who is also not going to have charges filed against him for uh, alleged domestic abuse. Um, I would, you know, you, you, you see like a guy like James Paxson who just signed with the Dodgers with health issues. I think they had to rework the deal a little bit because something popped up. Yeah, you have like a Zach Greinke, this old veteran guy who who's still that's an interesting through, through a lot of innings. Uh, he, he's pitched for the Royals before, so he no surprise. He's not uh, hitting mid nineties anymore. Uh, he is not. I don't know that if he's hitting mid eighties anymore, but uh, it's still effective, and um, he could eat some innings. Uh, you know, I I don't I don't I don't they know. They may just I don't go know with what, what they've got, go, what and they've got do, some, you know, and 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 look at some of these young kids now and say, yeah. you got you got to step up. At some point, Jack Ladder, you're you on gotta, the forty man. You got to step up. So, you yeah. know, what is it? You got to cut bait or something yeah. like that. Yeah. What's the, what's Sometimes the you got to cut bait. Um, and then for fishermen, you know what you're talking or, about. You just or, cut the bait, let it go, and you got to re rehook it. You got to shit or get off the pot. Yeah, that's the other one. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. So that's kind of where they're at with some of these, uh, prospects and, you know, they need, they, maybe that's, time maybe that's the route they go. Maybe it's that's time to shit and get, or get off the pot. Maybe that's where they go. But, 
Um, anyway, I, I do still think they, they're going to add somebody. Yeah, and, they, and, and minor, they just signed someone, a uh, minor league right handed pitcher today. That's Jonathan Holder. So, is that I mean, his name? Yeah. yeah, he hasn't pitched in the majors since 2020, I think. Um, hey, but has he been injured or has he just sucked? Tough piece. Um, you know, the, uh, Look, they, they signed uh, Urena, who who had to actually finish, finish the, <laughs> the year well with uh, the White Sox. And, you know, that might be your best depth piece right now. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. but, you know, the thing is, these guys who come on minor league deals, if they pitch well, they're going to, you know, they're scouts in every game. Uh, they have outs. Sure. So you, so you got to put them on the big yeah, league roster. So, I mean, or you, it, gotta... you know, that's stuff that kind of happens in late March. You got to figure out what you're going to do with, with guys who have and, outs or. And there are so. other teams that are going to drop players. Yeah. That you that can roll in too, and pick and, up on a minor league deal to, yeah. to, to add that. But, okay. But I would expect that another starting pitcher who you've heard of gets added. I just, I just don't know when. I think or, we all want who. Jordan Montgomery, but we also don't write the checks and open the checkbook. It certainly looks good. That uh, th- this thing with Bally is about to. It, it seems like there's a deal in place that's about to. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's it, it's about to happen. Hey, what about Adolis in this? I mean, they're still having yeah. reached. Are we yeah, going to go to arbitration? Uh, it, I mean, it sure looks. The court like started it, yesterday. You know, the cases did. Cases started Monday, um, or that was when they were going to have the first possible. Not not just with the Rangers, but there were 22 guys who crossed baseball who did not come to an agreement and. Um, Adoles had the biggest gap. Uh, he talked at Fan Fest, which we did not have last week on the show, and um, he said he's disappointed. He, he doesn't really understand, you know, the the business side of it, or, or why there's an impasse. Um, Chris Young mentioned that everything was amicable. You know, there's no hurt feelings yet. Um, there's there's been dialogue. So you know, maybe something that comes out of this is a contract extension, and you know, maybe maybe that's the end, the end result from this, you know, it, you know, you go to the arbitration hearing, which is, it's not pretty, you know, because the team is going to try to justify why it wants to pay Garcia one point nine million dollars less than he wants, and in so doing, they're going to say, well, he strikes out too much. Yep, he doesn't walk enough. Um, he's uh, he can get in a hack. You know, he you gets, know, he he's injury prone. Right? You know, he got hurt twice in the last. If you include the injury in the postseason, he got hurt twice in the last six weeks of this uh, of baseball or seven weeks of baseball. Now, arbitrators don't care if they hurt feelings. There, there are there are there are things that that will come out and it'll make him think, "Golly, <laughs> I, yeah. thought, I thought that was pretty good." Yeah, and he is. He's he's excellent. <clears throat> and, you know the the one case I I I looked at a lot of guys in their first year of arbitration, and <clears throat> the the one that that stands out is Kyle Tucker from the Astros who. Went to a hearing, I think it was last year. Um, he asked for, I think he asked for seven and a half. And the Astros countered somewhere around five. And um, Astros won. You know, so um, there's there's a pretty recent precedent um, of a first-year ARB guy not getting what, what he wanted. And it's not like the arbiter, the arbitration panel doesn't say, oh, well, let's meet in the middle at, at 5.8. No, it's 6.9 or it's 5. So, um Unless they oh. agree to something before they go to the case, right? Right. You can't. You can. You can ag- agree. Uh, it happened with the Rangers in 2016 with Mitch Moreland. They, I mean, everybody was in Phoenix for the hearing, and they came to they came to an agreement after midnight, like hours before this hearing was supposed to start. So it's possible. Um, uh, it would it would be nice though. You know, is Adolis Garcia going to be one of your? You want to keep him around for four or five years? Right? Well, yeah, I think so. I think so. So go ahead and give him an extension. Uh, right. How much a year? 15? Well, I don't know. But 10, 15. I mean, that's a big I mean, you know, he's still just in his first year of arbitration. So, so, so you can, buy, you can buy out those years and maybe buy out a year or two of free agency, but he's going to be 36, 37 when free agency comes. And that's the deal. He's well, already, what yeah, is he 30 yeah. right now? 31. He's 30. He's going to be 31 this year. So okay, 36, uh, let's say it's a five year deal. All right, I'm throwing shit out of, at, on the wall, but <laughs> let's say it's a five year deal, and um, yeah, he'd still he'd still if he's still a productive player, he'd still have time to look. Nelson Cruz played until he's forty two. You yeah. know, if if Adolis Garcia is still hitting home runs, he's going to have a place. Yeah. And he's more athletic than Nelson Cruz was, so he's going to be able to play in the outfield. Probably have a little more value. I mean, Nelly Cruz made a lot of money after age thirty five. Yeah, he made most much. of his money after twenty eight. Uh, so. 
So anyway, um, when the Rangers, we'll, got we'll see. There's some there's some things that are going to happen with in regards to that. And um, so, hey, um, good stuff. Um, let's get David in here. Uh, yeah, let's bring in Mr. Murphy. He's, yeah, let's uh, bring in Murphy, and then after that, we'll go down the bus lease for just a few minutes. Yeah, sounds good. All right, let's get David Murphy right after this. And joining us right now is Texas fa- Texas Ranger fan favorite. He does some of the uh, some of the color on TV this year. Uh, coming up next year too, hopefully. It's David Murphy. David, what's going on, bud? Not a whole lot. How are y'all? Doing well. Doing well. Um, big big ski trip coming up for you guys today, huh? Yeah, this is. Uh, you know, I, I did it a bunch growing up, and um, you know, had to take about 20 years off because of baseball. So um, it's probably my favorite thing to do uh, on this side of uh, retirement. So, yeah. So going to get out to the mountains for a little bit. Are you, are you, are you going to the great state of Colorado, my home state? Yes, sir. At a baby. All right. Well, they appreciate your tourism dollars. Yes, they do. I, I love Colorado. I haven't been in years. I used to ski all the time. Now I've told the wife, if we go, I will not get off a of green slope. I just, my knees won't be able to do anything beyond that anymore. Well, are you, are you any good? Are you good at skiing, David? I mean, you're, I don't know. I don't know what's good or bad. So I, (laughs) you know, I challenge myself. I actually, so this is actually, uh, third trip this year, went to big sky, uh, went to Telluride recently and, uh, yeah. So just, you know, my, my brother is actually 13 years older than me. He loves it. He's really good at it. So that was uh, the trip that I went on to Telluride. So when I go with him, he kind of pushes me a little bit, um, just, this is just going to be a family trip. So we may, may take it easy, but, um, I have a 12 year old son who's a snowboarder and, um, you know, he, maybe I'll push him a little bit. We'll see. You know, as a, as, as a native of Colorado, I've never been to Telluride. It's like on the complete other side of the state from where I grew up, but yeah, apparently, I mean, I'm, apparently it's really I, tough. I, I'm the type of guy that I want to go absolutely everywhere. So, and I've, I've been to pretty much all the big ones. Tell your ride. That was the first one. That's the first time I've ever been there. And I will say, uh, maybe because it's a little bit more remote, like it was a great place to ski and it was, there was almost nobody there. So that yeah. was very attractive. There was the longest lift line that, that I waited in was about three minutes. Yeah. Now, now I got to ask this. Now, do you ski or do you snowboard? No, I ski. Um, snowboard looks and snowboarding looks enticing, but at the same time, um, you know, when you when you get on the catwalks and you hit some of the flat ground and they're hopping along, it just looks completely uncomfortable. So, right. yeah, if if you have, it, it kind of looks fun on jumps. It looks fun, you know, on moguls. But if you hit any kind of flat ground or on greens, it does not look fun at all. Yeah. So I took my wife and I went with a youth group one time we were the chaperones for a youth group at our church she hadn't skied in years and i used to ski a lot my dad lived in colorado when i was a kid she started trying to talk me into snowboarding this was probably 15 years ago i was like i know how to ski yeah i don't know how to snowboard and she did snowboarding for about two hours and, that was and i said just put the dad gum skis on she was happy the rest of the way i'm like we're not 18 years old and can uh, it just not what well, it's not worth it yeah no, yeah and, and, I, I, go ahead David. go ahead I, no, I, I was going to say I have a few friends who have done both, and they say that skiing is easy to learn and harder to master, and snowboarding is harder to learn and easier to master. But I think my take on it is I only have so many days out on the mountain as it is. So if I'm going to learn how to snowboard, it's going to take a good three or four days at least to get comfortable. And, yep. you know, I only have maximum six or seven days on the mountain in, in an entire year. So, like, I don't want to waste a year. I'm with you. I'm with you. I totally agree. All right, uh, it, it's the off season um, for a few more weeks, I guess. Um, what it, it, I'm, I'm sure you feel it and felt it last weekend at Fan Fest. There's still a a huge, huge buzz from this World Series season. Yeah, I guess you would hope that's exactly what's supposed to happen, you know. Yes. Um, and maybe the fact that. The Cowboys, you know, got ousted from the playoffs a little earlier than everybody expected. 
Um, you know, the Mavericks are, are having a pretty good season, but it's when you win a World Series, there's just when you win any type of championship, it, it should create something different within your fan base um, because you're excited about the team, you're excited about the upcoming season, and you have players that you want to follow. Um, you know, everybody wants to follow Marcus Simeon and uh, Corey Seager and Adolis Garcia. They want to see what Evan Carter can do. You know, there's a lot of buzz about Wyatt Langford. So there's, there's a lot of things to be excited about. What's, um, that, I mean, the, the off season, it's been probably the weirdest since I've been covering the team, just the way it's flowed baseball wise, yeah, uh, baseball short. wide. God, it's been so short because they went so long, but, but like as far as signings and additions to the clubs, it just seems like you know, Otani and Yamamoto kind of controlled things in December and now Boris yeah. has his guys. Um, but the Rangers didn't need much. What, what have you, what have you thought about how they've navigated the off season? Yeah, it's, I think it's weird. I, I think you, you see the kind of like this balance and this back and forth, maybe, maybe not for um, maybe up until say 10 years or so ago, or maybe not even quite that long, but it seemed like it was always a player's market and, you know, it was typical. The players were going to dictate what was going to happen. Your big guys were going to set the market and then your dominoes were going to fall after that. Well, then you started seeing some of those mega contracts and, you know, you've started seeing a, a changing of the guard in terms of the way that players were looked at because the analytics came into play so much that, um, you, you started to see guys not sign until February or mid February. And it was so uncharacteristic of, of what we were used to. And then what, about three or four years ago, they just, oh, you know, teams started handing out money like crazy to whoever wanted it. So it <laughs> seems like on the, you know, on the front office side and on the ownership side, now they're trying to, to recorrect that because so much money has been giving out and they're thinking, well, you know, Cody Bellinger, yeah, he had a great year, but he's a guy with uh, low exit velocity, so we can't pay him all that money. And Blake Snell, is, a, you know, he just won the Cy Young, but he doesn't go deep into games even though. Yeah. So I guess there's there's huge positives and huge negatives with, with a lot of these guys. Um, you know, obviously we saw Jordan Montgomery, and uh, maybe he's he's not quite what he was in the postseason. You could argue that, but man, he he did so great in that stretch run. So he's clutch at the same time. So I'm sure what the teams want to pay and for what uh, versus what the players want. You know, there's there's a little bit of a gap there. Um, but I would love to see the Rangers get Montgomery back. I think we all would. You know, it, it it's February second, and I mean, spring training, you know, pitchers and catchers are first workouts in 12 days. Yeah. As a player, I would be going crazy if I wasn't signed. I, and so, so my last, my last off season and I, but by no means was I any type of big name free agent. Um, and it wasn't, I didn't even get a big league deal my last year. I had to settle for a minor league deal. And I think that's kind of what I referred to in the changing of the guard and just yeah. the way the players were looked at. Um, but I, I signed on February 29th and that was back in 2016. And I, I will say that, I, that, that I was miserable and I didn't know if I was going to get a big league deal or a minor league deal. So, yeah. you know, you think of these guys, they know they're going to sign a major league contract. They know that they're going to get, you know, multiple years, they're going to get five, six, seven years, whatever it's going to be. Um, but I think it's especially from, from the family side of it, guys that have families, guys that want to know where they're going to live in spring training because all that housing is probably picked over and then they're kind of running out of time. They, they don't want to do all, all of these things last second where they're trying to pick where they're going to live and, and figure that whole situation out. So yeah, I, I feel for those guys because that's not a, a good place to be knowing that spring training is so close. Yeah. I, I guess to your point, Montgomery just has his, his wife who's uh, in a medical residency in Boston, but you know, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of people are, are pointing to that as we're trying to uh, figure out where he's going to sign, but she's not going to be there even the whole year. She, she, she moves on to a, another residency, I think in Nashville next. So, you know, I think Boston fans were like, Oh, Hey, he's going to go with his wife. I don't think so. Um, and, and, you know, as you know, you're away from your family so much. Um, 
and you you got to go where you got to go where the, the the money is, I guess. And, yeah. I mean, you played for Cleveland for crying out loud. So, um, I I just I would just think that no knock on Cleveland. Uh, yeah, not at all. <laughs> I would just think that where um, where his wife is is, is not going to be the deciding factor. It's going to come down to years and 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 salary. You can change residencies anytime as a doctor. And you have to think. I mean, I I didn't I didn't talk to him while he was here, um, but. You, you've got to think with the experience that he just had with as well as he pitched down the stretch and then winning a World Series from a sentimental standpoint, he, you've got to figure that he, he would love to come back here. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Obviously, yeah. you know, we, we've got a bankruptcy uh, affecting us financially, and I don't know how much that comes into play. So, uh, you know, it's unfortunate to see him still out there. Would would love to see him back. Yeah, I you know, and the state of the rotation with the injuries. I mean, I I feel pretty good about the five, but the, you know, oh yeah, you, you can always you can. The the depth is the thing. You know, there's not a there. You if 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 uh, knock on wood, uh, hope you know Nathan Evaldi has to go on the disabled list for a month, the injured list. Sorry, I hope I didn't offend anybody. Um, <laughs> who you know, you're you're right now. You're leaning on a an Owen White or a Jack Leiter. Right, they're pretty un, un, unproven, so you'd probably want a guy who has been there and done that. And they've got to be getting another veteran arm, no matter what. You think that's, that's what you think? You'd think, uh, but I don't know. But um, what you know, Adrian Beltre, who we'll talk about here in a second, he he said that um, the Rangers winning the World Series, and Michael Young has said this, and I think probably Ian Kinsler kind of kind of took. Uh, was like a relief for for guys who were on the 2010 and 2011 teams. A little bit of the sting, yeah. Took away kind of the sting, but also now the city has its title. Do you do you feel that way, having been on those clubs? One hundred percent. You know, just seeing you, you just talked about the joy and the you know the energy around Fan Fest and what's been going on since you know November October. Um, I think the first person I thought of was Nelson Cruz. And it, ironically, obviously he, he retired the next day after, after the Rangers won, um, you know, <laughs> because so many, so many people, you know, the conversation, you run into fans, you, you talk to people that, you know, you relive those years, man, y'all are such a good team, but uh, you know, that was a great run, but you know, yeah. talking yeah. about game six, talking about David freeze, like, um, all the talk that has gone on for, for so long now. And I think, you know, it's still part of this team and in, in the history of, of the Texas Rangers franchise, but it's, it's not the lasting memory now. It's just, you know, the, those were tough memories. Um, I think we as players can see enough of, uh, especially in, in 2011, what a great series that was, even in a losing effort. So you, you appreciate it for, for what it was. Um, but, 100 percent from a because i think every player is going to look at one team throughout the course of their career where they're you know the team that was nearest and dearest to their heart um where they had the most fun where they had a group of teammates that they enjoyed the most and i can't speak for those guys i i could assume at the same time i could say for me that those teams were that was the best time I ever had in Major League Baseball and maybe maybe my entire baseball career, my entire life. So yeah. um and, and now because of that, we're we're fans of the franchise forever, you know, and, and a lot of us still live locally. We're still around, you know, I'm fortunate enough to uh to still be employed by the team. So yes, I want to see this team win. And when when that last pitch was was finally recorded, when Josh Ford struck out Cattell Marte, it just it felt it felt so great. And as a competitor, I'll be honest, there were times during the postseason where I was struggling. I'm thinking, man, I, I wish I could have been part of that team to to bring, you know, the Metroplex its first world championship. But, you know, bottom line, we, we had our opportunity and we didn't get it done. So I think I don't I you know, um, you, you kind of just had to process that and and think through it but then you start thinking about obviously the guys on the team you think about the coaching staff but then uh i you know i had the chance to work the parade and so i started bringing up all of these names like uh you know jamie reed who you know has been on the medical side of things for so long and brandon boyd who's the clubhouse manager 
all these people who spend, you know, spend so many hours away from their families above and beyond the players, because a player's career is going to end when they're 35, 40 years old. If it's, if it's a good career and these guys do it long past that and they sacrifice so much. So for them to, to take part of it, to take part in it, even though they weren't on the field, um, you think about all of those people and then the fan base and, um, I've never been a guy who has thought about, you know, when you're talking about your team and you say we, even though you're not out there doing anything and you're you're not out on the field. It's, yeah. it's, always, it's always been kind of weird to me. But then I started thinking about it more after the World Series and, and just how there's, there's something that there's so many people that. I don't know. I, when I got to see the trophy for the first time, I was just like, man, it's in a, in a way it's, it's just a symbol of, um, you know, of the fan base, obviously of the team the most, but of, of everybody, um, that encaps- encapsulates the team. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think if you're drawing a paycheck from the team, it's okay to call yourself a we, well, like, <laughs> but, but I understand what you're saying. I mean, this is a, it's a, collaborative uh, all-inclusive fans can say we you know yeah. they, they normally do yeah um it just there are a lot of it goes beyond like you said the 26 on the on the field you know there were guys jake latz who was with the team the whole time who never never played he was just there just in case i mean they're um you know and you mentioned jamie reed and matt you know matt lucero the some of the athletic trainers they get there before the players and stay after i yep. mean <laughs> it's just the clubhouse attendants. I mean, there there are all kinds of people who who are a part of this, and and hopefully they all get hopefully they all get rewarded with rings. Well, yeah. and 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 the clubs you were on, David, the 2010-11 team, as a fan, because I was a fan. I'm a fan. Always been a fan. Grew up a fan. The expectation level was raised because of the 2010-2011 teams, yeah. where now they actually started watching and expecting more from the Texas Rangers because. They were, in fact, that 2011 team. There's still a lot of people that think that was actually the best team in baseball, uh, and it, you know that that ended. And you know, was, the 2012 team too. Well, they were great. That's to bring something else up, Yeah, to, to bring up more things. <laughs> but it raised the expectation level. So to see all and a lot of the core of that team are still part of the club now. You included, along with Ken's and and Michael Young, Colby and, Lewis. Yeah, yeah, a lot of those guys. Oliver. I mean, it's got to feel great for y'all, but y'all raised the expectation level for the fan base who now thought this is a team that we need to start competing for World Series. Yeah. And yeah. You know, the 2012 uh, team had the, had the highest that that was the record attendance year. I mean, the I know what happened in 11, but there was still the fan the fans were still there and expecting and and now that's the norm, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's great to see it. I mean, I, I think we as players are going to minimize, you know, the maybe the the cause and effect there because uh, who knows? May, maybe there was from a fan base side, but um, you know, I, I think from my point of view, um, you know, th- there's nothing about Seeger or Semenya or those guys who you know are feeding off what we did ten plus years ago. Like they're sure. they're going to go have the same season last year, regardless of of what we did. So who, who knows, like in some roundabout way, um, you know, if, if what we did had some effect on, on what happened, but um, at the end of the day, there's just a bunch of really talented players and obviously the, the right man and Bruce Bochy who was leading them. And on my part, I'm talking about the fan level, the fans yes. became way more engaged through y'all to where they were feeding and hungry. And the moment this team started playing and got back to the playoffs, this fan base was crazy because they had been to a world series before. Yeah. No, so I, they were I, like, I let's, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah. You played, you played a few seasons with Adrian Beltre. He just went to the, uh, was elected to the hall of fame. Did they uh, get it right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you weren't around him for all eight of his years here, but do you have a, a, a favorite story good way to, encapsulate encapsulize um what adrian beltre meant and what it was like to be his teammate yeah um i just remember the the way that and i talked about this a little bit in the last week or so um the way that he was able to use his talents on the field and be such a good player while also being able to goof around and and keep it fun 
I've just never, <clears throat> never seen a player be able to do that. Maybe like Miguel Cabrera, but I feel like Beltre probably had, you know, an effect on Cabrera. Beltre did it first. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, you know, most guys that, that kind of mess around out there, they're not able to flip the switch and focus when they need to. And Adrian was able to do so. Um, he was able to enjoy the game and, and he had an effect on me because I feel like I always took it too seriously. And so I'm just like, man, I, I kind of admired just how much fun he was having out there. And I'm like, I, I want to be more that guy. And, and obviously it helped. It wasn't just him. It was, there were so many guys on the, on those teams that were just so much fun and that kept it light, that kept it loose. Um, you know, the, the, the funny story that I've been telling is uh, it was a spring training game. I'm playing left field. Obviously Adrian's playing third base and there was a line drive hit down the left field line for a double. And in the process of while, while I'm running to go get the ball, to throw it in, um, I'm, I'm like, did I just see Adrian throw his glove up at that line drive <laughs> and try to hit that, you know? So, you know, there were times where there were like ground ball doubles down the line where, where he would throw his glove at it too. Maybe sometimes during the regular season. <laughs> um, and, you know, for a lot of people don't know the rule. Like if you make right, if it, hits it, it's a, yeah, it's a purple. Yeah, it's a three base error. So, um, you, you know, like that you're obviously taking a big time risk there, but just a, a really, really funny moment. I think uh, another one that was great was uh, he got caught in a rundown between second and third. And, you know, we were in Houston, whoever was chasing him, uh, he basically ran halfway you know down the left field line to the to the left field foul pole um and phil cuzzy i believe was the umpire and you know usually you you don't get much of a reaction out of umpires and yeah. phil, phil cuzzy was dying laughing and kind of put his arms on adrian after he called him out and you could see you could see adrian in his uh it, you could read his lips and, and he was saying to Phil, he said, he never tagged me. He never tagged me. <laughs> uh, so just, just, uh, man, amazing. And turn, if, if you can incorporate comedy into the game, you're definitely going to win my heart. And Adrian did that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, John here took to Twitter last night after you confirmed that you were going to be on the show. And, um, yeah, I got a few questions with some questions and there's, okay. there's one, there's one probing question that everybody wants to know. Yeah, what are you? What What is your uh, TV uh, schedule looking like this year? Or do, do you with have C, one with yet? CJ gone? Oh, with CJ gone. Yeah, so I don't. I don't have my schedule yet. Um, yeah, I. Uh, goodness, I don't even know how much I'm supposed to share. I'll just say that I'm going to do. Uh, we're we're going to split it up between a few guys, and I'm I'm going to do about forty five to fifty games. So that's oh wow, that's, that's more than last year, right? Uh, so last year, I mean, I've been working more on the pre and post side in recent years. Uh, the last two years, I want to say I've only done about 12, uh, as a color analyst back to back in 2021, it was easy for me. Cause obviously I'm trying to, you know, be around at home and coach youth baseball and be around for dance and volleyball, all these different things. And so in 2021, because COVID was still affecting, you know, broadcasters and travel, like we did everything from home. So I did 45 games of color that year, but I didn't travel for a single game. So that's kind of made it a little bit more challenging in recent years. Uh, You know, I've wanted to minimize travel, but I think we're in a place as a family where, um, where I can, you know, start to do that a little bit more and uh, we'll, we'll see what that looks like. I don't know exactly what my, my final numbers are and how much I'll travel or anything like that. But uh, yeah, so somewhere in the 45 to 50 game range. Did did you, did you get fired as as coach of the youth teams, or, or, or are you gonna navigate around <laughs> around tournaments and such? So I I hope so. Um, I kept that in mind when I kind of submitted all all of my dates. Um, you know, I know it's a team effort. You know, I'm not I don't expect to get all of the games that I want because you, you've got some other guys in the mix too. Um, but yeah, to make it to make it more challenging to answer your question. Uh, I've been coaching my oldest son, who's going to be, uh, you know, on a 13U team this year. I also have a nine-year-old. And so I'm not only coaching one team, I'm coaching two teams this year in the midst of all. So it's going to be a busy spring, but I'm looking forward to it. 
it's a lot of fun and enjoy it. I'm telling you, as a dad that coached two boys at the same time, at the time, I swear, I was running around going nuts. My wife's trying to help and do all of that. And you're going, God, this is crazy. I yeah. miss it. I miss it so much now. Yeah. My youngest is now a junior in high school. So yeah. I'm like, ah, those were, those were actually pretty fun. Well, if, if I can think back to the time, you know, I started coaching when my oldest was six, you, and now he's 13. So if oh, you geez. think about how, how fast that amount of time went and fast forward again, I mean, you know, I'm going to blink and, you know, both of them are going to be done. They're going to be, you know, oh, yeah. be high school, or college, whatever out of the house. And I, so, yeah, so I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'll you got a, you got a daughter up there, right? Isn't she in high school? Two daughters. Yeah. So I have, <laughs> we have six, 16, 15, 12 and nine. That's, that's crazy, David. I, I think the last time you were on, I said this too. It's, you know, that's crazy. I knew, you I, knew, them all as I knew you when you had no kids. And now you, <laughs> now you have kids who are looking at colleges and driving. And <laughs> I'm telling you, flies by. I got a 26 year old yeah. kindergarten teacher. So, uh, so are, do you, do you own these teams? Are these teams part of an organization? No, yeah. Or? They're, they're part of uh, the, the Dallas Nationals organization, which okay. is, uh, yeah. I, I live up in Argyle, based, based here in Argyle. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a great situation and um it's man it, it's I, as much as i love broadcasting um and love being around the team i'm just i'm a physical guy and i love being on the field and so even like when we're when we're practicing like pickoffs and rundowns and practice like i'll i'll be the guy in the middle like and i'm <laughs> i'm still you know like uh, i'm getting closer and closer to to pulling a hamstring but <laughs> you know, I, I, I like breaking a sweat and and being physical so i have i have fun fun doing those things on the field that's awesome what uh, yeah no the my son is a year younger than than your oldest son and uh we're kind of in with an organization and now they're going to do two teams and you know, I think, I think there's some like behind the scenes politicking by some parents and absolutely it's really uncomfortable. You know, <laughs> I, I, I am, I don't want to do that. I don't uh, miss let that. my son's merits speak for themselves. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of, I, I knew it was there. I knew it was prevalent. It's kind of cringy. It was there when <laughs> I was in high school and then in, in little, but it's, it's like, come on. Yeah, yeah. And, and not to mention too, and I've, I was just having this conversation last night with my wife. It's just funny because, you know, you talk to, there, there's a lot of guys in the area that, that coach are involved with youth baseball with their sons. And it's funny how, you know, people that have less or not much experience in the game of baseball, because I can, I can tell you on one hand probably about five guys that when I was 12, 13, 14 years old were surefire big leaders, you know, just yep. how yep. good, how good they were at that age. Yep. And, and I would maybe one or two of them played in college, you know, like it just, they can all such, change. It's yeah. such a weird game when it comes to like the physicality of it, because you see some kids grow early and they're men among boys and they seem, you know, they seem like they're just going to dominate the baseball world forever. And then other kids catch up. So, you know, it's really, you, you start to see at those older ages, once things level off a little bit, you know, who's willing to put the work in, obviously, you know, first and foremost, who's been given the God given talent and then what, what they do with that on top of it. Yeah, yeah. J- Jason Trujillo was the the kid when when we were kids who was going to be a Hall of Famer probably. Sure, like, yeah, absolutely. Know, when we were ten and eleven, this kid was, you know, and there were like rumors about him, like he's older, he was adopted, and <laughs> they don't have the paperwork right, and he he dominated through 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 gas, you know, this and. He ended up playing in high school, but that was it. Yep. You know, yeah. and it, it's eventually those kids start throwing hard. That's when it all. I was an all star my whole career, and then I got in high school and they got threw me a curveball. And you know, I, I concentrated on catching footballs. I mean, it just changed. Okay, Tr texted me the moment I announced it. He texted me and he goes, "Okay, you tell him for old time's sake. I want to hear one more story about Yaz. He loves Carl Yaskrimski. He said he bugged you about it your whole life." Apparently, Yaz helped you out when you were in the minor leagues, when you were with the, but you got to tell something for TR. We got to take care of him. Yeah. I don't think I, I don't think I have any new ones. Um, <laughs> well, we've never heard them. So tell yeah, us Yeah, that the one I always, the one that sticks out and I've probably told TR this one before that, that used to crack up. You know, I, I used to crack up um, because you're taught, you're taught as a hitter to use the whole field, right? You're right. Got a, a, a complete hitter uses the whole field. 
and that's what Yaz did. You know, he had the green monster. You know, he was, yeah. he, I, we, you don't get that many hits and have that type of resume, you know, if you're just a dead pole hitter. Well, I, I was in the cage and, uh, you know, nobody's throwing to me. They're just going underhand flips and he's checking me out and I'm hitting just rockets like what, what would be into the left center gap, like over this, like low line drives, like right over the shortstop's head. And I take a few swings like that, just like that. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm right where I need to be. And he, he's like, all right, now stop. He's like, no. And, he, and he's got, you know, he, he smoked a bunch and he's got like this deep voice, <laughs> now, you know, and he's like, now, now tell me what happened there. And we had kind of talked about timing and that was something I really struggled with in the minor leagues and talked about me being late a lot. <laughs> so I'm hitting these missiles and he's like, now what's going on? I'm like, I'm, I'm late. And he's like, yep, you're late. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so he, and so he's just encouraging me to make the adjustment. So I just start snap hooking, you know, <laughs> you know, balls like down what would be down the, the right field line or, you know, in the four hole in between the first and second baseman. And obviously, like, if you take the right swing, you're hitting the ball with backspin and getting good loft on it. But I'm hitting these balls with, like, side spin and top spin and completely getting around the ball. And, it, and he just says, that a boy, that a boy, and, <laughs> and, and walks off. And so I'm like, I, I left that session a little bit confused. But, you, you know, I guess it's good to, to know that to, to be on time and, uh, you know, make contact with the ball out front and, and get the head out because, you know, there's, there's definitely plenty of truth to it too. Um, yeah. Cause if you're late, yeah, but it's, it's hard to tell in the cage too. So yeah. um, who knows? Yeah. All right. Well, we Charlie took it. I mean, he won a triple crown and, and, and apparently held TR forever and ever was his favorite player growing up. Still that to this day still is. No it still is. Is. No is. He, he texted me immediately and I was like, yeah, you, absolutely, Tr. I'll ask him for you. Uh, you know, we'll get one more. One one fan asked this. It was kind of funny. Everybody wanted a good to, question. Yeah, and they, they wanted to know about your TV schedule with with CJ leaving. So you've answered that. One guy asked, and I for, totally forgot this that you were part of the 2007 Boston. That was the trade year. That's when you came over for Gagne. Yeah. They, they want to know if you ever wear your your World Series ring. I I've never worn any of my rings. You know, I have one. I have the 2007 Boston. I have uh, you know both of the uh, the pennant rings from 2010 2011. It just it's it's not my nature um, yeah. to to wear something that that big and that gaudy. I, who knows? Like maybe one of these days I'll bust it out for fun if it's a formal event. But um, uh, I don't know. I I, I hate I hate denouncing it or saying guys can't wear it because sure. it's something that you earn and it's special. But uh, I think for me, at least for the time being, it's more of a, a trophy to look at than, um, you know, than something to wear. You know, let me ask this because you got <laughs> traded. They went on, they win the world series. So I just assume when the Rangers went to town the next year, is that when they presented you with yours? Yes. Um, so that was my first full year with the Rangers. We actually went to Boston in April. So it was convenient. It was in April. Um, yeah. It was marathon day. It was marathon weekend. That's right. Yeah. Good yeah. call. And, yeah. uh, he doesn't forget anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Jack McCormick, who was the traveling secretary at the time, not sure if he's still over there, but he brought it over and presented it. I, I was only up for four days. So I didn't expect anything big. I didn't expect Tito to, you know, to come make any big presentation or anything like that. But I, I do have a funny story because, uh, so Kurt Schilling, he went on the, the disabled list. I guess I can say disabled list because it was the disabled list. Yeah. Back then it was. Yes. And, uh, so he basically, he went on the disabled list. They were in San Diego for three days and then they went to Seattle. And so basically because, you know, National League baseball at the time, you needed an extra guy off your bench. They brought me up and they, I knew it was only going to be for four days because yeah. then, uh, Case and Gabbard, who got traded with me with you. Yeah. to Texas, they called him up in my place so that he could make the start, you know, for, for shillings next time around. Yeah. But I remember getting to San Diego that day and, um, and Kurt, you know, say what you want about shilling. Like I, you know, I thought he, he was a good teammate. You know, I had moments where, uh, he was more out of the old school. So all those veteran guys, it was a little yes. bit, I, I was a little, I was always on edge being around yes. those, those group of veterans, but 
anyway, uh, and he he never really acknowledged me that much to begin with, but uh, he saw me across the clubhouse. I was one of the first guys there that day, and uh, he was like, "Hey, Murph." And I, I kind of looked over there because I'm like, is, is that Schilling like call, calling my name? And I was like, hey, hey yeah, what, what's going on? And he just goes, you're welcome. You know, <laughs> to get the fact that I, w- I was in the big leagues only because he got hurt. And I'm like, all right, that's that's not cool. But uh, <laughs> I guess you're right. Like I said, it was it was that um, maybe that's the way that the, the veteran guys showed the younger guys love at, at the time. No, that's and that that's that's the truth, and it's but it has changed. That that I think that has changed some. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Uh, you know, but I you the fact that you have a ring for four days four days, you know, everybody who played for the Rangers this year is getting a ring. Sure, you know, Owen White is going to get a ring, and he was, deserves one. You know, and then um, so <gasps> hey, you know, good good for them, and um, uh, but yeah, so anybody who played for the Rangers this year gets a ring. Yeah, so. what a, what a special opportunity for all of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and like this team, along with the 10 and 11 teams that you played on, you know, there are guys that are on the end of that bench down there that play such a huge part Yeah. during the year. Those guys that get called up to make spot starts during the year, every one of those deserve it because they help this team get where they needed to in situations. I'm, I'm sorry. I think if you stepped out there on that field at one inning, you should get a ring because you, you helped that team. They needed you for that moment. Yeah. yeah, and, sure. and what, a, what a classy move by the organization as well. Oh, that was uh, very cool. Rec- to recognize that and, uh, you know, because who, who knows, those younger guys, who knows what their the entirety of their major league career is going to look like. It could end up being 10 to 15 years, and it could be, you know, a month or two. Um, but regardless, there's there's always going to be a story behind that, that ring that they're going to be able to share with people. Absolutely. Sure. All right, well, go, go uh, skiing. Yeah. <laughs> you got to catch a flight. I'm, are you driving or are you flying out? No, we're, we're flying. I'm headed there. Just a little okay. Bit of stuff. Yep. All right, guys, that's David Murphy. He is part of the color analyst for the Texas Rangers. He's going to be doing some games this year. Fan favorite, part of that 2010, 2011 team. David, thanks so much for jumping on here with us. You guys have fun and we'll see you out the yard. Anytime, guys. Thanks for having me and uh, look forward to the next time. All right. Appreciate All right. We're going to go down in the bus leagues after this. Thanks to David Murphy for joining us. Now he's heading off to Colorado, your home state. That's yeah, where go. yeah, you know, it's hard, hard, hard place to beat. You yeah. Know? Okay, let's go down in the bus leagues. Here's what I want to talk about down in the bus leagues because this this trade happened yesterday, and people were trying to wonder the comparison. <laughs> Corbin Burns got traded to uh-huh. the Baltimore Orioles, uh-huh. and if you saw who they they sent over, DL Hall and uh, DJ Hall, yeah. DJ Hall and uh, Trey Lopez, Lopez or Ortiz. Or a tease. They were the. They both top one hundred. It's in uh, today. It's in today's uh, Rangers Today newsletter, uh, yes. which you can get by signing up at rangerstoday dot com. If yep. you want five ninety nine a month, full access. It's five ninety nine a month or sixty dollars for the year. And there may or may not be, meaning there will be a special for spring training coming up. If That's you want to, if you want to hang on for a couple of weeks and, and save a little money doing that, if you just have to have it now, then go ahead and sign up. But yeah, it was. Um, the Orioles got Corbin Burns from the Brewers, right, and, exactly. and, and and Corbin Burns is awesome. <clears throat> He's going to be a free agent after this year, so this is kind of a, we're going to go for it move. Right. You know, I know the Orioles are for sale, so maybe uh, maybe that that works out that they end up uh, getting new ownership who wants to spend money, and they they can talk talk him into the stand. But uh, right now, this looks like a go for it move. Um, they were close last year, won 101 regular season games, the most they have the league. race. Now the they Rangers, have the, the Rangers race. came in, swept him right out of the playoffs, and went on to win the World Series. Um, yeah, Joey Ortiz is an infielder. DJ Hall, DJ Hall, who pitched in the postseason, pitched well. Um, he was in the bullpen. Brewers want to make him a starter. Anyway, number six and number seven prospects and top one hundred. They're, they're and and the Orioles are also trading their. Um, compensation pick right which the uh, rangers which, don't which, have which rates at 34 so basically um 
the Orioles are getting three top 10 pro or the, or the Brewers are getting three top 10 prospects to an already great farm system. Yeah. Um, so, so what's the Rangers equivalent? Well, Walcott would have been in there for sure. So that's, well, I mean, six and seven on the baseball America list were Dustin Harris and, uh, God, Brock Porter, but neither um, one of them, Brock Porter is in the top 100. No, he's not. Not in Baseball America, but he yeah. is in he he is in MLB Pipeline. But uh, you know, when you go to top one hundred, I went I went MLB Pipeline is what I got on yesterday. Uh, Hall and and uh, Lopez, right? yeah, Trey uh, Tr- Joey Ortiz, Joey jo- jo- Ortiz. Ortiz, Ortiz and Hall were both top one hundred in all of baseball. They uh-huh. were both eighty two and eighty eight, something like that. All right, um, in 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 top one hundred. So that's where I went through Walcott and. Porter are the two that are in top 100. Porter lower, Walcott obviously higher. So if you went with Walcott, maybe you don't have to go with Porter also, but you're going to have to go <laughs> yeah. probably someone like an Ezekiel Duran. You're going to have to go um, somewhere into that range to do it. So yeah. it was attainable. Sure. For sure. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the, it, it was there. But I, but they, I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, uh, the Brewers got a haul. Yeah, they they, they, they got, what you do you they got a starting starting pitcher out of it. Uh, sounds like uh, uh, they're going to move uh, Ortiz to third base. Uh, try him out <coughs> there, but um, yeah, I, I, the the you know the Brewers are kind of in flux as always uh, with their finances. They're not a big market team. Um, Burns, you know, you got to get something for him while you can because yeah. they're not going to be able to resign him. So, and, Ori- um, and I'll tell you right now, um, the Oreos, they were good and they just got better. They did, uh, but you know, crazy things happen. You know, I, sure. you know but yeah. uh, anyway, I I think that you know the the Rangers, you know, if 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 you know maybe maybe to make that deal happen. Uh, cause they didn't have that competitive balance pick. They would have thrown it, throw in a couple a couple, a couple guys, maybe a couple guys in the, I don't know, 15 to 30 range. Um, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting though. We we're talking about, according to baseball America, uh, just released their organiza- or organizational rankings, yeah, rangers one are- Orioles, two Brewers, three Rangers. And this is the highest the Rangers have been since 2013. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's top heavy. It looks like uh, with, with four and five with Carter and Langford and Walcott. Uh, but there's some there's some depth piece, you know, some pieces in there that haven't haven't hit their their stride yet. Jack Leiter, Kumar Rocker, who's hurt. Um, we'll be back halfway through the year, yeah, probably this yeah, year. Uh, well, you got to think right now. The top prospect pitching prospect in this organization right now, uh, as it stands, is probably Porter. Owen, well, Owen White well, still has prospect status. I know he doesn't in your in your demented mind, but uh, <laughs> which is about to start. He, about he, a- he's got he he's probably topped, and yeah, yeah. And then then Porter, who pitched only at high A last year, um, pitched well. It's really a. well, yeah. But this is where you know what we were talking about earlier. He'll this is to- where this is where Leiter, um, <clears throat> this is where he puts his best foot forward. Zach Kent, another guy who I think gets for, forgotten a lot. Uh, cleared waivers got went through uh no he's on the 40 man Zach Kent's on the 40 um so uh i i think that what these, about Cormier, Corniel's on Corniel, the on the 40 yeah, he, but is he, uh, is he, he he only pitched the high a last year so i i you know i don't anticipate that he'll be a, a major league option right away unless he's um, a bullpen piece and yeah, yeah, even then um um the rangers got some you know, they have Dane, well, they got Dane, some, Dane, Dane Acker's a guy who i really like and, yeah um, we both do. He's a friend, friend of the show, but beyond that, he's a, he's a good pitcher. And, um, so anyway, Raiders have a really good farm system. They could have gotten Corbin Burns. They could get, they could get, uh, Shane Bieber. I always want to call him Justin or guy. Um, but Bieber, a similar situation to Burns is a free agent after the season. Do the Rangers, are the Rangers going to have the money to, uh, extend him the TV deal thingy? So, well, you got it's, Scherzer coming off the books after this. It's kind of a mess. Yeah, you do have that. that <clears> that's <throat> coming off. Uh, well, that's twenty-two million. That's that's not chump change. So, no. um, we'll we'll just have to wait and see. But um, the Rangers do have the system to get any player they want. It just depends on how how bad they want them and what value they put on that guy. So, anything else? No. Um, 
this is a this is a, a an exper- experimental ep- episode, if you will. Uh, uh, our first for Odyssey. We're using kind of a new new recording system. David Murphy, God bless him, went through three different <laughs> devices to, <laughs> to to get on there to get, to get on there. It seems um, like the camera part's going to be easy. Uh, it certainly seems like the audio. And you know, we had that meeting the other day, which was so different than any meeting. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, you're not when you have eight people sitting there, and this guy's your marketer. This guy's your. Yeah. The, I mean, I I felt like I, my eyes were doing this. I was like, okay, yeah, all these yeah. people are. Here yeah. for us to help us. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what they're going to do to this thing of uh, post production, uh, but um, it's not just going to be a blue screen. You know, we're no. going to we have a we can do a scroll, we can do graphics, we can throw in videos. Um, it's it's going to be pretty neat. It's gonna it's it's not going to look like two guys doing it in the back of a real estate company. We're <laughs> we're actually going to be doing it. Um, speaking of, thank you to Premier Properties. They've agreed to. To sponsor us in spring training. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, all, everything we do there will be brought to you by premier properties, sure. which is, which is awesome. And which is a deal from last year. That's yeah, carrying over. And you can go to the rangers day.com and click on the, uh, their, their ad that's on the website to find out more about them. And, um, uh, or you can just buy John and beer and he'll tell you all about them. That's, too. A, so, that's absolutely. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's, uh, let's wind I'll this buy one the beer down. If you're talking about real estate, and let's then. wind this one down. We're, we're over an hour. David Murphy, always fun to talk to. And, yep. uh, all right, guys. Hey, we'll have one more show before, uh, before spring training. So yeah. Thanks. Is getting, to, this is getting fun. Big thanks to David Murphy for coming out. Thanks to Odyssey for taking some chance on us and seeing where this thing goes. Guys, we say it at the end of every one of these, but we'll do it and, uh, we'll be back here next week to do it this time. But until then, folks, we'll see you at the yard.